Okay, so uh, our, our next speaker is Philippe Della Casa on Neolithic supply chains and distribution networks in the Azure Basin a Systematic Approach. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning everybody and thanks for being here and thanks for inviting me to the <coughs> session. I want to talk about the distribution networks of uh, Flint in the Adriatic Basin and I'll start, um, well this is the general layout of what I want to tell you this morning, uh, starting from a case study uh, already a couple of years ago on a small uh, Croatian island of uh, Sushats and uh, eventually it turned out that material collected there had a specific importance for uh, the aspect of uh, flint circulation in the Adriatic Basin, mostly flint from Gargano sources. So that's what Andrewski says, the sequence of toolstone procurement to stone tool discard is decided by cultural influences, situational constraints and raw material accessibility and that's exactly like the framework of the research trying to understand these various aspects here again in a um, little scheme we have a political sphere that is important that has to do with the group boundaries and territorial aspects we have environmental constraints of course we have a technology that influences the way um, that uh, tool stones are used and uh, we can add more aspects to that uh, framework. So, um, chain opératoire and uh, their extending to social and technological system have been an important uh, discussion in the last years. Uh, this is just to remind the uh, framework of the early Neolithic that is important uh, to understand, an important uh, change of uh, procurement strategies and diffusion strategies as we turn from a late Mesolithic to early Neolithic. ICC in Presto Cargo complex that within a very brief span of time, maybe 150 years, that's from a bit of old diagram and Bayesian modeling uh, spreads. Uh, all uh, across the central and western Mediterranean and creates a network of connection within which uh, some uh, very specific uh, raw materials will circulate. I want to focus on flint today, but of course we also have obsidian, unfortunately we're missing rock type and uh, different other uh, raw materials that would be interesting to look at. So here's the case study, Sushat survey and excavation in the late 90s. Uh, Sushats is a small island, which is uh, west of uh, the larger South Dalmatian Islands. It's uh, mostly uninhabited, but it uh, bears a couple of uh, very uh, thrilling archaeological situations, two of which I would briefly address today. Uh, they were um, surveyed and uh, test excavated uh, by the international team. Uh, one is uh, SU. 002 that's in the south of the island. It's an early Neolithic site, as you can see. It has a typical uh, impresso ceramics and um, very peculiar uh, flint tool assemblage. And it's been uh, dated by radiocarbon to the uh, beginning of the 6th millennium Cal BC. That's the oldest evidence of human presence we identified during the survey on the island. The second side is 027, uh, which is quite a large and uh, mostly deflated site on, uh, overlooking the, the, uh, the coast of the island to the west. It has some structural elements uh, that I will not uh, comment on further. Uh, the important thing is that it had a lot of surface fans because of uh, deflating erosion but also some uh, fairly well stratified uh, middle Neolithic uh, context and that's uh, the uh, key issue of uh, that site. But I want uh, to um, press your attention onto that large chunk of flint. There was a surface 
find on, on the site. It's a, a decorticated nodule uh, of flint, uh, one and a half kilo heavy, so a big blank uh, of raw material. The stratified context, as you can see, uh, if you're somehow familiar with um, South Italian and uh, Dalmatian uh, Middle Neolithic, consists of uh, polychrome painted pottery. So we are in an evolved Middle Neolithic phase, and we have some uh, other peculiar elements, such as this like facial um, flint uh, piece. We have uh, right next to the other 30, fingers not long enough, a, a little piece of uh, an obsidian core uh, and uh, other um, elements that are quite uh, um, typical of uh, the period we're talking about. Again, we have a radiocarbon date, which is about a thousand years younger than the one from the early Neolithic side, so it's around 4,800 Cal BC, which goes pretty well with the polychrome, trichrome, uh, ceramic phase that is also known. Uh, across the Adriatic in, uh, in Apulia. So that's uh, the most important uh, context of the site. There is some material from other phases, but we are quite confident that most of uh, the recorded uh, archaeological material uh, must uh, be somehow related to these uh, stratified contexts that are all of the Middle Neolithic. Okay. Uh, back in um, 2000, first microfacial analysis proved a Gargano provenance of um, the lithics from uh, SUO27 and other um, sites on uh, Sushet's island. This was work done by Jeanne Folto, who has a long record of uh, microfacial analysis in Switzerland, and she identified several Gargano lithotypes mostly from the Pistici area, and was able to relate our Sushat's finds and also some material provided from uh, our colleagues Palagruja and Venaspila uh, excavations to that flint source. At that time, um, it was not uh, widely recognized that Gargano flint supplied most of the Adriatic coast from the early Neolithic, so that uh, research maybe remained um, unnoticed for a couple of years. But now with newer um, and intensified research, uh, both on the Italian side, on the Gargano flint mines, and also on the Croatian side, on the, the materials from archaeological sites, it has become evident that the Gargano flint mines are the main supplier of flint in, from the early Neolithic in that area, which is uh, southern Italy and the Southern Adriatic Basin. A lot of publication have appeared in the last years on the Gargano flint mines, in particular on the different solar mine, maybe the most famous that starts around 6,000, so has some of the oldest radiocarbon dates for flint mines in Europe altogether. You can see that on that uh, diagram here of the available for C dates. I would like to uh, stretch this uh, two things on this diagram. One is that there is a, a post-5000 BC uh, radiocarbon date from Defensola. So though the activity on the mine seems to lower to, towards the end of the 6th millennium, there is evidence for uh, flint mining coeval to our middle Neolithic site on Sushats at one point. And then, of course, there is a lot of Neolithic or cooperation, whatever you want to call it, like 4th millennium, uh, activity in different mining areas of the Gargano. So after the early Neolithic, early to middle Neolithic exploitation phase, there is from the fourth millennium a very important um, new uh, mining activity and uh, distribution activity of uh, flint from Gargano. Now, why is this uh, interesting in Zurich? We happen to host a 1950 collection from a guy called Ruchman. He obviously spent a lot of time on Gargano earlier in the 20th century and collected uh, intensively uh, flint from mining and working sites 
Some might also have a settlement aspect, but these are mostly ateliers uh, close to the mines where the transformation of the primary modules that would be mined uh, happened. These are surface finds. We have almost no record except for that funny map on the Lucanda Al Castello. Um, it still exists that restaurant <laughs> <laughs> where he. Uh, reported his uh, findings and uh, a student in Zurich spent a lot of time of identifying the sites first of all and, and creating a GIS space in order to uh, localize uh, what's uh, in all these boxes that is uh, hosted in our uh, collection. So one important question then, that's the, the core topic of today is what are the formats of distribution of the flint? So because flint uh, supply in Neolithic sites, of course, very wide topic, so I really want to focus on, on this specific aspect. We know from uh, our Italian colleagues that the Gargano mines were the main supply, for example, in the early Neolithic of the entire Tavoliere and uh, the many, many uh, Neolithic uh, sites in, in this area. But how did uh, the flint actually circulate and reach uh, these settlements. Little was known about that. I can quote Tarantini from 2012 with reference to the site of Masseria Candelaro uh, in Italian, la scarsa quantità di lame verticali e di supporti di inizializzazione a fronte della presenza di tutte le altre fasi del debitage suggerisce l'idea di un arrivo della selce del Gargano in forma di prenuclei. So he says from indirect evidence that he has a lot of Flint uh, debitage on the site, so he supposes that some form of blanks or pre nuclei must have reached uh, the settlements. And okay, that's exactly what we find on Sushats. It's a decorticated nodule, so it has been tested for quality. It has been uh, evidence that we have a high quality uh, flint nodule, and that's a format in which it's transported, and it's actually in this case transported across the Adriatic. We would expect that it also went to many other sites and was then worked into actual uh, tools. So that's for the early and middle Neolithic. Then the things change massively towards uh, later periods in the e Neolithic. There seems to be another format of uh, distribution. Again, uh, Tarantini uh, puts out the hypothesis di lavoro, a working hypothesis, it says that it's probably. Uh, so that the bifacial preforms are the main format of distribution of the raw material and that these preforms are then later in atelier or in, in sediment atelier worked into tools such as uh, bifacial points and in particular uh, punta di freccia, uh, arrowheads, bifacial arrowheads. And this again is what we find on Sushas. We have these uh, typical ojibe, these uh, typical preforms of the uh, Gargamo flint lines and other uh, bifacial uh, elements that can be preforms or pre tools. So we have evidence of both these uh, distribution uh, systems on, uh, on uh, the same spot, this very small island, uh, which indicates first that uh, yes. Tantini and his colleagues were quite right in their hypotheses about the ways of uh, distribution of the uh, ground flint. And yes, it's also possible to trace it all across the Adriatic. And we can see from the material in the Ruchman collection that it is an extensive production of preforms of the fourth millennium. There's hundreds of these preforms, and they're all very similar, as you can see on this photo taken from uh, Rosina Tony's uh, work. Um, so it's an industry. It's not uh, just a fortuitous uh, way of uh, producing with the flint raw material. It's a proper industry that then ends up in the sites, such as Torres uh, Pacato here in this example, and on the sites are worked into uh, flint arrowheads. Now we talked to uh, lithic technicians. They first did not really want to believe that. They said it's uh, it's cumbersome to uh, produce a preform and then work it into an arrowhead. It's much easier to work it directly to an arrowhead from a flake. But that's a technological aspect, and in the technology we must consider those social aspects 
And obviously, there was a socioeconomic uh, factor here, very important uh, from the producer side to the consumer side. And that's done through the bias of these uh, preforms. Just as in uh, metallurgy, we have ingots. You could imagine that objects would be melted into form right where the copper is produced. But now it's not the case. It's first uh, it's, uh, transformed into ingots and these circulate. And we have a very similar uh, system here now, evidence for the uh, Gargano flint. So we can start linking these producer and consumer sites, and we can, of course, start thinking about how uh, these materials cross the Adriatic. If we look at the uh, Poulin's uh, drifter data, it's quite obvious uh, that uh, also from the early Neolithic, and the penetration of the Adriatic basin would go along the eastern coast mostly. And, uh, <clears throat> but then, due to the specific situation here of the central Adriatic with the small islands of Susa, Palagruz are the uh, Trendy Islands, and the Gargano is very well linked to uh, central and southern Dalmatia and offers a island uh, bridge, which is well known to the works of our colleagues for many years on Palagruja, for example, and just finds a confirmation now with the Gargano flint circulation. And we might even issue some hypothesis where these preforms ended. It's always been striking that in Palagruja we have all these arrowheads. Where do they come from? They're from Gargano Flint. Where have they been manufactured? Nobody knows. Maybe on the island itself. None of these preforms have been found so far on Palagruja, but okay, Stasha's not here today, but I'd like to discuss that with him one day, whether this is a possibility that we have here. A typical consumer site which uh, was receptive of these uh, preforms um, of raw material. Thank you very much. Here's a little list of acknowledgement of people involved in the research. Some are here. Thank you. And uh, just uh, two uh, articles that uh, should be published soon. They will uh, resume what I've just presented today this morning. Thank you very much. <laughs>